So it's my pleasure of introducing the last speaker of the meeting, Pierre-Emmanuel Capras from Louvain-la-Neuve on simple algebraic groups among locally combined groups, please. Thank you, Alain. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I wish to start by thanking the organizers for uh, this great opportunity. It's, uh, it's really a pleasure and an honor to take an active part to this meeting in, in the memory of Jacques Tite. Since the conference in approach, is approaching its, its end, uh, I would like to invite you all to join me in a warm round of applause for all the organizers and all the staff here who made this event possible. So. Okay, so indeed the, the topic of my talk, uh, uh, as I've tried to suggest it in the title, I would like to view simple algebraic groups, are, uh, and more specifically simple algebraic groups over local fields as special intense instances of simple locally compact groups. And, and before I, I go more, more, more specifically into that, that topic, I would like to step back and, um, and uh, um, think about the, the or present part of the, uh, the messages that uh, Jacques Titz uh, gave at, uh, on the occasion of his inaugural lecture at Collège de France. So during that lecture that you, you can read in, in his collected works, um, so he, he described his vision about group theory at the time. Uh, he highlights several key research directions, uh, uh, notably the, the classification of the finite simple groups, which has uh, an active, uh, an active and, and rapidly moving uh, uh, ongoing project at the time. He also mentions uh, Margulis' uh, arithmeticity theorem, which ha had just come out uh, uh, at that moment, and uh, so he, he highlights that uh, uh, very much. And then towards the end of his lecture, he says the following, so I, I will read it in French. Il sera certainement profitable d'étendre le champ d'investigation à d'autres classes de groupes moins connues. Je pense notamment au groupe de Moody, à certains groupes de transformation birationnelle, aux groupes simples, localement compacts, non discrets. And this is for me an, oca an occasion to underline once again the meticulous work of the organizers who have scheduled a talk on birational transformations, followed by a talk on simple, non discrete, locally compact groups. So, thank you. <laughs> okay, so. Um, before, so still, I, I would like now to go back in time and mention again the uh, Tit's work in his, in his PhD thesis because it contains an instance of the kind of result that I will be inter uh, interested in myself for my presentation. So this has already been mentioned in, in Gernot Stroth's uh, talk. So uh, Tit's thesis studies uh, the, the class of uh, a, spe a special class of permutation groups, the, the so-called sharply k transitive groups. So I, re I remind you the definition, a group is sharply k transitive on a set omega if it acts sharply transitively on k tuples, k -tuples of distinct points. And easy examples are provided by the full symmetry group on n points. The full symmetry group on n points is both sharply n transitive and sharply n minus one transitive. It's also easy to see that the alternating group, it's sharply n minus two transitive. Gernot uh, re reminded us that Tits proved that when k uh, is at least four, there is no infinite such, such group. But when k is three, there is a, a prominent infinite family provided by, by the projective group, PGL2F, acting on the projective line over F, where F is a commutative field. And here is a, another theorem from Tits' thesis. Uh, so if you assume that G is sharply three transitive on omega, then actually this permutation group is the projective group over F acting on, on its projective line. If and only if the very simple following condition is satisfied, the double stabilizers are, are abelian. Okay, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a very nice characterization and it's exactly the kind of result uh, I'm interested in. So in this specific class of permutation groups, sharply three transitive, 
you have a prominent sub subclass, the projective groups, and you have a, a si very simple condition that characterizes singles out uh, those, those um, uh, projective groups there. So this thesis was published in, in 1952 by, as a memoir of the Royal Academy of Belgium. And the, the, in fact, the question of trying to characterize the simple algebraic groups among permutation groups. So in, in some sense, this was a, a special instance of such a characterization. But of course, rank one simple algebraic groups, it's a larger class than projective groups. And in fact, this topic uh, uh, remained in, in, in the core interests of, of Tietz. And actually, he devoted his last uh, series of lectures at Collège de France to, to precisely this topic. Group, group de rang 1 et ensemble de Mufang. So Mufang sets were mentioned by Bernard Muller uh, in his talk. And it's a theory whose purpose is precisely to characterize the simple rank 1 algebraic groups among uh, permutation groups. OK. So now I'll continue on, on the board. <coughs> so in my talk, so G will be throughout a locally compact group. And so, yeah, there was this notion, a simple locally compact group, in that, uh, the, the expression that Tietz used. And let me define this. So I will say that G as a locally compact group is, is simple if G is not the trivial group and, and if it does not have non-trivial closed normal subgroups. So I, 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 I only impose restriction on closed normal subgroups. Okay, so there is another notion of simplicity, which is algebraic, the, the, the simplicity of the underlying algebraic group, so abstract simplicity. Uh, and in, in general, there is a difference. I will not go so much into, uh, into, into that, that direction in my talk. So remember, so that's the definition of a simple locally compact group. So what are um, families of examples? So first prominent family is when G uh, is a connected simple Lie group modulo its center. Uh, of course, I want to mention the simple. So, so a simple algebraic group over a local field. So here, G, G is a simple algebraic F group of, uh, and I will take it simply connected, of F rank at least one. And F is a, is a local field, so a finite extension of, of QP, or the field of uh, Laurent series with coefficients in, in FQ. So th these are the, the key, key linear examples. But then, yeah, um, there are more examples. And uh, one of them, one family which remains important today, is, uh, it was studied by Tietz. And it's given by uh, groups acting on trees. So um, let me take a special subclass of such trees. So I will take the so-called semi-regular trees. So T is a semi-regular tree of degree D1, D2. Uh, these are integers that I assume to be at least three. So any tree, it's a, it's a bipartite graph in a canonical way. So you have black and white vertices. Uh, and uh, uh, so the white vertices have valency D1, the black vertices have valency D2. So this is my, my definition of a semi-regular tree. And then Tietz, in 1970, he showed that so the automorphism group of T are more precisely the, so the subgroup generated by uh, Pointwise stabilizer of edges 
this is a, a simple locally compact group. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, just to, uh, to to wrap this up, so. Also, in, in the, the passage of the Titsin Irregular lecture that I mentioned, he also, he also points out the Les Groupes de Moody. So nowadays they are called Katz Moody groups. And, and uh, so some. The topology is the topology, uh, the, the compact open topology for the action of the tree or the top. Yeah. No, no, because I, I, I really look at the subgroup generated by pointwise stabilizer of edges. So, the, so both, yeah, white vertices are sent to white vertices and black to black, yeah. That's right. So in the regular case, there is, there is a quotient of order two of the full automorphism group, and this is just the index two subgroup, yeah. And so here, I will just write the name of irreducible complete cat Moody groups over finite fields. Uh, but I will leave it as a black box. Uh, the simplicity here was, the topological simplicity was proved by Bertrand Rémy, and then it was extended by Timothée Marquis. And uh, yeah, the list of known examples goes on and on, but uh, I, I will not elaborate it further. Okay, um, so the starting point uh, of, my, of uh, my interest here is uh, the fact that uh, when you study the structure of locally compact groups, there is a, a very major uh, uh, a result that was achieved in a long series of works in the first half of the 20th century, which uh, um, resulted in the solution of Hilbert Fifth problem. And uh, let me, let me um, formulate a consequence of this. So it's a consequence of work of notably Montgomery Zippin and Gleason Yamabe. So Montgomery was actually uh, on the uh, committee, evaluation committee of TIT's habilitation thesis in, the, in 52 in Brussels. Um, so let G be a simple locally compact group. And the following are equivalent. One, G is connected. And two, G, G is a Lie group, so a simple Lie group. Okay, so, so that's, uh, uh, yeah, exactly in the spirit that, uh, um, of my talk. And uh, so remark that in general, Uh, the connected component of the identity is always a closed normal subgroup of any locally compact group. And so here, uh, this theorem treats the case of connected groups. So uh, if G is not connected and G is simple, you can assume that the neutral component is reduced to the identity, and hence G is, a so is totally disconnected. And so, for most of the, the remaining time, I will focus on, on the class of TDLC groups, totally disconnected, locally compact groups. Okay, so, so we have a theorem dealing with really groups, uh, characterizing the simple, the simple connected groups in the class. So the next class 
that, uh, that I would like to discuss is the class of p-adic uh, simple Lie groups. And so I will present here the theorem. So let G again be a simple locally compact and assume that G, uh, G is p-adically of dimension at least one for some prime p. Um, then I, the following conditions are equivalent. So the first condition is that G is algebraic. So by, by this I mean a simple algebraic group over a pianic field. The second condition is that G is compactly generated. So it has a compact generating set. The third condition is that the I joint representation of G, so it, it's a periodic Lie group, so it has a Lie algebra, uh, which is an algebra over QP, and, and uh, there is a canonical representation, the adjoint action of G on its Lie algebra. So this, this is always a continuous linear representation of G. It's always defined. And, uh, and here the condition is that this is actually a faithful, a faithful action. And the fourth condition is that G is linear over QP. Yeah, yeah, so it's really, yeah, good point. Uh, what I mean, so algebraic groups, uh, what I, I really work in the class of simple locally compact groups as I define them, so I really take SLN QP modulo its center to be in my class, so it's, it's, it's an algebraic group in the sense, I, I know that PSLN is, is not algebraic, but, but it, it's, it's the quotient of, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's. Does the pianic Lee not imply locally compact? Uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Just a. It's. Absolutely, yeah. Pianic Lee groups are. Are uh, uh, examples of uh, locally compact groups. Okay, so let me explain. So, so the fact that uh, these simple algebraic groups are compactly generated—that's a, a known a, a, a known property. I will not uh, uh, explain why it's true, but it's a, it's a known <coughs> easy fact. So, the fact that two implies three. I can say a few words about this. So. So in fact, the, the kernel of the adjoint action, you can relatively easily describe it algebraically. So it really consists of the elements of G that centralize whose conjugation action is trivial near the identity. So it, and this, you, can, you can phrase it by saying that the centralizer uh, of this element is open. And so this, this is a, an algebraically defined subgroup. Uh, we, it's called the quasi-center of G, and usually denoted by QZ of G. It's, it's always defined for any locally compact group. It, it's a characteristic subgroup. In general, it's not closed. Here it will be closed because it's the kernel of a continuous homomorphism. And, uh, and, and here you, you have a result due to Yiftar Barnea, Misha Hershoff, and Thomas Weigel from 2011. And they showed that if G is 
compactly generated simple TDLC. Um, then the quasi center is trivial if and only if the group is, is non discrete. Okay, so then once you know that, that that's already uh, the end because here we assume G is compactly generated, uh, so it's of dimension of positive dimension, so it's non-discrete, and so the, the kernel of the adjoint is, is trivial. Of course, if your adjoint representation is faithful, you are linear, and then the fact that linear periodic uh, simple Lie groups are algebraic. This was uh, explained by in a paper by Raf Klucker. Yves Cornulier, Nicolas Louvet, Romain Tessera, and the chairman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Comments on what types two is the memory of kids. It's, there's a paper by Gorel and Tits which uh, <coughs> reference G, when G of B is compatible with the Okay. Okay, thank you for, for the historical comment. Okay, now um, the next question, which is relatively natural, is um, maybe, maybe all these conditions are redundant in the sense they always hold. Uh, so is there any simple periodic Lie group that does not, that is not algebraic, that does not appear on this list? And, uh, and uh, the answer happens to be positive, and this, this was recently uh, observed by uh, Minasian, Osin, and myself. And so we, we showed that for every integer d, for every prime p, there exists a family of two to the Alice Knopt isoclasses. Of second countable simple periodic Lie groups um, of dimension D and more precisely with Lie algebra. Um, is, is a billion. It's QP the power D. And so when, once you know that the, the Lie algebra is a billion, uh, this implies that um, the group acts trivially on its Lie algebra. I mean, the, the kernel of the adjoint is a closer group whose Lie algebra is the center of the Lie algebra of G. Okay. And so when the Lie algebra is equal to its center, the kernel of the adjunct action here, it must be an open subgroup. And so it's the whole, it's the whole group. Second countable means that uh, um, the, the topology is, is countably generated. If there is a countable then subset, the group is metrizable. Yeah. So, so it, it's important to, I mean, it's important to say that the group, these exist, it's not because we, we, we are looking at huge cardinals. That, that's what I wanted to clarify. So maybe I'll spend some time um, explaining where uh, this theorem comes from. And the key, so I will sketch part of the argument for D for the one-dimensional case. And the key, the key is that we, we reduce, I mean, the problem of constructing these Lie groups 
to constructing a, 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 a suitable family of finitely generated groups. We construct a chain. Uh, where for all k, so the first condition is that gk is a finitely generated group, uh, which is perfect the center of gk, which I will denote by zk, it's, it's cyclic. The third condition is that gk modulo its center is simple. The fourth condition, uh, which is crucial to get what we want, is that the, the, the center of the k plus first group, it's a subgroup of the center of the kth group. So, this is an, so these are two cyclic groups, and you want that this embedding is an index p. This is an index p. Uh, uh, of the next one. And then there is a, f a fifth condition is that the centralizer in the case group of G0 is simply the center of G0. OK? Okay, now, um, once we have such a sequence, we will look at the union. The union. So this is a group. And uh, this actually is, is a simple group, this union. It's, it's simple, and of course, it's a countable group as a, by construction. So why is it simple? If you take n normal in G infinity, which is not trivial. So for k large enough, you can look at the intersection of n with gk. It's, of course, normal in gk. And by our conditions on gk, so gk is simple moduloid center, and the centers shrink when you, when you increase uh, the index k. So for k large enough, nk, it's not contained in ZK. And so because modulo ZK, GK is simple, you get that NK times ZK is GK. OK, but then the quotient of GK by NK is just a quotient of ZK by the intersection. And GK is a perfect group. ZK is a billion. So this quotient is trivial. OK, so N, NK is GK. So N contains GK for any large K. So N is G infinity. OK. And now how do you get a non-discrete group out of this? Well, the what you do is to define G, you look at the inner automorphisms of G infinity. Uh, this is, of course, a copy of G infinity because you have a simple group. But I view this as a subgroup of the automorphism group. And the automorphism group, I view it as a topological group with a topology of pointwise convergence for the action on G infinity. And for this topology, I take the closure. And that's, that's our group, our so, so the first thing to, uh, to understand is why is this group larger than G infinity? OK, so I claim that G is non-discrete. So what does it mean? Uh, so being discrete for this topology, it would mean that uh, uh, there is an identi identity neighborhood in G which is trivial. Identity neighborhoods are pointwise stabilizers 
of finite subsets. So I, I need to take E, a finite subset, and I need to look at its pointwise stabilizer in G. But because of the definition, a finite set is contained in GK for some large K. And so the pointwise stabilizer in G of E, uh, it actually um, it contains the stabilizer in G of GK. And this contains the center of K. Okay, so you see that pointwise stabilizers of finite subsets, they are never reduced to the uh, trivial subgroup because there is always at least an infinite cyclic group there. So now, um, so what, what you can show is that, so you need to, to, to show that this is a locally compact group and that it's actually a, a periodic group. And for this, it, suffi it suffices to, to look at one, one identity neighborhood, which, and for this, we will just consider the stabilizer of, the pointwise stabilizer of G naught. And using one of the conditions, it's not too difficult to show that this is simply the closure of Z0. But by the construction, how does the conjugation action of Z0 behave? So what is this action by conjugation? This actually factors through Z modulo P to the KZ that follows from our conditions. And from there, you can, you can deduce that, in fact, this identity neighborhood is just a copy of the periodic integers. So, so this is already enough to, to prove that. So it shows that G has, a, has an open subgroup, which is compact, so it's locally compact, but it, it has an open subgroup, which is periodically. And that's enough to deduce that G itself is a periodically group. Um, and then finally, you have to show topological simplicity. So if you take and a closed normal subgroup of G, I mean, you, of course, you do the obvious thing. You intersect with this group that is simple. If this intersection is trivial, then N commutes with G infinity. But it acts faithfully by conjugation on G infinity. So, so this would mean that N is trivial. And otherwise, N contains G, this, uh, this simple group. And then N is dense. So you get topological simplicity. OK. So you can interpret this as a warning concerning simple locally compact groups that are not compactly generated. They, they, uh, they are more complicated than one expects. Um, so the next result I want to mention was a joint work with Thierry Stulemeyer in 2015. And so this is precisely about compactly generating. Simple locally compact groups. Uh, and for such, uh, so under the compact generation assumption, um, it's equivalent to asking that G is linear over a locally compact field, or to ask that G is either a finite simple group or a simple Lie group 
or a simple algebraic group. Okay, so yeah. Exactly. I take the simple locally compact group that comes from, from this algebraic group, yes. That's but again, um, so this is uh, faithful to the program or, uh, that I have assigned to myself for this talk. But uh, again, it, it must be emphasized that uh, some simple locally compact groups that are compactly generated fail to be linear. And, and in fact, um, so the full automorphism group of the, the biregular tree that I mentioned before, this is not, not linear. And this is quite easy to see. So it contains, it's, it's, it's quite easy to show that it contains Reef product, a reef product, where H is a finite non-abelian group, whatever the tree T is. And so this is a finitely generated group. If you, you take H non-abelian, this group is not residually finite. That's easy to see. And so if you embed, if you contain a finitely generated subgroup that's not residually finite, you cannot, you cannot be a linear group over any, any field, in fact, by, by a theorem of Maltzeff. So, one, the linear is implicit, implicit that the mark is continuous? Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's continuously linear. Yeah, here I impose the continuity of the, the representation. And here, this argument actually shows that this group is not linear, even if you allow discontinuous uh, representations. Okay. And so a last theme that uh, I will briefly discuss. Um, so uh, it's to use another key property of uh, simple algebraic groups over local fields is their actions of, on their Ruyatitz buildings. And uh, so I, will, I want to use this action in an attempt to characterize the simple algebraic groups in my class. So, so here is the result that uh, one can phrase using this. So let G be a simple PDLC group. Then the following, uh, and sorry, we let R be an integer, at least two. Then the following are equivalent. So one is that G is a simple algebraic over F, a local field of F rank R. And two is that G embeds as a closed subgroup in the automorphism group of an irreducible locally finite uh, affine building of dimension D, of dimension R, sorry. And the G action on B is strongly transitive. Okay, so, so this building is associated to G through a BN pair. That's another a BN pair with B compact open that would, fo that would follow from, from the, the conditions there. Okay, so again, comments are about uh, the various contributions that uh, allow us to 
to state this, this theorem. So, of course, one implies two. That's the Briatid theory. It follows. It. And, uh, and that, of course, holds even in, in, in rank one. Um, but to go in the, the reverse direction, so there, uh, you, you have to be more cautious. So in rank, in, in rank at least three, um, this is again due to Bruyne and Tietz, and it follows from the classification of the uh, of those of all those irreducible locally finite uh, affine buildings. They all come from simple algebraic groups of a local field, and once you know this, you can you can um, uh, deduce the theorem. In the rank two case, um, so the result is also true. But, um, but you, are not, you, you are not in a position where you can invoke this classification because it's simply not true for two-dimensional affine buildings. And so, so this case was done by Hendrik van Maldegem and Christel van Steen in 98 for the A2 tilde case. And it was done in general with Nicola Monod in, I think, 2015 for all the two-dimensional cases uh, without, uh, with a, a, a unified argument. And the key, the key part of the proof is, is to show that the spherical building at infinity satisfies the move and condition because then, again, uh, you, you, you can invoke the classification if you have the extra information that the building is moving at infinity. And just to finish, I, I want to, uh, uh, to ask the question, so can one classify the simple TDLC groups uh, satisfying Uh, two with r equal to one. So, so what happens in the remaining case not covered by the theorem? So for the one-dimensional affine buildings, in that case, b is a tree. OK, so trees are one-dimensional affine buildings. Uh, in that case, it's not true that all all groups acting strongly transitively on trees are algebraic. So again, the full automorphism group of the tree is a nonlinear example. But still, I think it's, it makes sense to ask the question, can we, can we actually list all the possibilities up to isomorphism? At this point, I don't even know whether there are countably many isomorphism classes or not. Um, and uh, I would like to mention uh, sig significant progress has been accomplished by uh, Nicolas Radu uh, in 2017. So, so he showed that he obtained a positive answer if D1 and D2 um, belong to a, a magical, a magic set of values, which is 34, 35, 39, 45, 46. What's the next? 51, 52, and so on. And so the, yeah. Oops. maybe, ah, I forgot 55. That's it. The eraser was unhappy. So what is this set theta? So theta is precisely the integers greater than or equal to 6, such that for any subgroup of Sm, which is too transitive, H contains Am. That's exactly the set 
this set of values. It's an infinite set of values. It's even asymptotically dense. So we know all the finite two transitive groups as a consequence of the classification of the finite simple groups. Most of them are AN or SN, with a few except exceptions, most notably the projective groups over finite fields. Okay, and whenever the log, so, so the, when you have a, a group acting strongly transitively on your tree, you can look at what we call the local action. You take, you take a vertex stabilizer and you look at how it permutes the neighboring vertices. This is the finite permutation group, which under these assumptions is actually a finite two transitive group. When this finite two transitive group contains a m, and when m is at least six, so Radu obtained a, a full classification. There are count, countably many simple groups. Uh, and uh, we, we have a precise description of them. And uh, yeah, I will okay. finish by also writing Colin, Colin Reed's name. So he has a very recent contribution to this problem. He extended the work of Hadou. Notably, he, he, he could treat the cases where the local actions have perfect stabilizers. But he has done uh, many other things. I, uh, I will not give you details about uh, the, the statements he obtained. I'll just finish uh, with a few pictures. So uh, here we have uh, discussed trees as special cases of buildings. So if you have some free time this afternoon, I recommend you visit the Musée de l'Orangerie. So you will see notably this uh, beautiful painting by Shaim Soutin, where you see that the boundary between the tree and the buildings is not, is a, a bit blurred. <laughs> but thanks to my kids, I also realized that they are also um, uh, representations of the fact that trees are buildings. Uh, and this is uh, in a nice book by Claude Ponty. And uh, it says on this page that Isé et Ador Amour passent dans une ville forêt pleine d'arbres maisonnants et d'immeubles arbrissonnants. I will not try to translate it in, <laughs> in English. And uh, I will give the last word to, to Tits once more. So really at the very end of his inaugural lecture, he, he said this sentence, je me rassure pourtant en songeant à la solidarité coutumière aux mathématiciens dès qu'il s'agit de leur science. And I would like to finish by formulating the wish that uh, this solidarity that he is referring to maybe a source of inspiration on a much broader scale for the challenges of the 21st century. Thank you.